welcome to another episode of the Data Science YouTubers podcast. Unfortunately, we don't have Chris this time, but we still got Shannon and Deval from the Data Professor channel and the Code Basics channel. So both of them, their, their channels are linked below in the description and as well as pinned in the comments. I've also included the playlist of all of these series, all of the podcast episodes uh, linked down there as well, if you want to go back and, and see some of the topics that we've talked about previously. So I think that this is our, our fifth episode, so I don't really think we need to introduce everyone. Yeah, we don't but, need yet. But definitely go check out their channels if, if you like what we all have to say here. Now, this week, the discussion I really wanted to focus on productivity, motivation, and organization when it comes to learning data science and working as a data scientist. I think that this is extremely helpful and a valuable topic for anyone that's even you know related to this field. And since I've been working with you guys, I've just been you know so impressed by your ability to actually like do all of these things. You know, I mean, Shannon is a, a professor. He has a kid, and he's making YouTube videos. Same with you, Duval. You know, you're working full time, and you're creating a lot of really good, high quality content. So, I think that you guys are great examples of how some of these, um, you know, how some concepts around productivity, motivation, organization are really applied. So I just wanted to kind of start this conversation and, and I'll start with you, Deval. You know, how do you manage time and what what tips can you give others trying to learn data science while they're either working, while they're in school, or while they have other competing interests going on? Sure. So it's a very good question because today the world is full of distractions and you have so many things to do. So uh, number one tip is uh, prioritizing your work using some productivity tools. So there are different tools such as a Trello, there is a Zoho Sprint board. If you want to use a simple application, then you can use uh, uh, an application mobile app, which I like, which is called Todoist. So there you can maintain uh, different projects that you're doing and you can add your tasks and you can prioritize them. So I always use uh, these tools to prioritize my work. For example, I did uh, data analysis Power BI projects. So that was, uh, you know, based on the interest that people are showing in my YouTube community, I will pick up a few projects. I will prioritize them based on people's interest and then once I pick up the project, I focus on that. So focus is very important. Once you take something, uh, just finish till the end. Most of the time, productivity is wasted when we leave the thing in between. You know, because we start something with excitement and after pursuing that thing for some time, we lose the interest due to whatever reason. Uh, so it's important that we finish the thing till the end. Uh, another thing is uh, timing your work. So basically when you wake up in the morning, you're fresh. So I use some of my morning time for doing some reading or learning something new because that that time your mind is fresh and you want to uh, utilize that time in a most efficient way. Then there is a time of a day such as, for example, three to five, so you're kind of low on the energy. So then I try to prioritize some of the mundane work, which doesn't require too much creativity or cognitive thinking. Uh, so that kind of prioritization is important. Uh, one other factor is, I know this is, we can just keep on talking about this, but uh, one other factor is uh, having focus hours, uh, which we have, I think, discussed before, which is uh, if you are working on, let's say, data science project for a few hours, keep your cell phone away, just or mute all the distractions and just be there because when you get an error in your program that you're writing and uh, your mind has this tendency to go to easy places so you will feel like I want to go to Facebook check the news really quick because I'm stuck here but don't do that so those are some of the things that I do also I try to say no to a lot of things which the things where I cannot contribute the things which are not an area of my interest, I would just try to say no to those things. Uh, for example, meetings, you know, we get pulled into all kinds of meetings at work. Uh, so if I feel like I'm not going to contribute to this meeting, I will just uh, decline by just saying, sending a nice message that say, 
if you need me uh, i can join later but i i don't th- i don't i don't think i'll be able to join so saying no to a lot of things a lot of dist- distraction is also important one last point i want to make is making little choices are very important so for example when i got my job i had a choice of going to new york office or princeton office which is like just 30 minutes from my home so i if i had gone to new york i would have earned much more money and in terms of career opportunity it would have been even more better but then i had my own priorities my social priorities and so on so i made this conscious choice of choosing a different office where i can save one and a half hour on commute every single day and it's been 10 years so just imagine for 10 years i save one and a half hour which i can put somewhere else in doing something very meaningful one other choice that me and my wife made was my wife is a respiratory therapist and she had an option of going to for a full time job where she can earn a lot of money but then we decided that we uh, want to prioritize our social life and then i have this side gig going on so i had this very you know fr- open conversation with her that look this is this is something i'm doing youtube and i'm very passionate about it uh can we do something so that you know i can get some time out of our schedule and she's very understanding wife so she said okay so then uh, i will do a four dm job where she just works now two days a week instead of let's say five days a week and then since she is getting a lot of this free time she will take care of groceries for example i i rarely go for groceries uh because that i i don't like groceries i don't like shopping and things like that so i say i feel i save so much time from that but in order to gain that time i had to let go a few things which is of course my wife now could be earning double than what she's earning today and then i could have made much more money i could have made much more career progression if i had chosen to move to new york office so it's really like you have to be practical on what you want and then making small choices will make a di- big difference awesome stuff what about what about you chana yeah so uh so the fir- for the first part is uh you have to be accountable so um if you think that you want to learn data science and so you ha- first of all you have to take full responsibility for your learning so the responsibility is, is not anything else other than you so if you can start by owning your own education your own journey then you have the power to decide what do you want to do so so i resonate with what devo is mentioning about uh the small choices which eventually leads to the big choices later on and uh, the time that is saved so all of this will impact what you are doing and how you can uh do things and i totally agree i mean embarking on this youtube journey is very t- I mean if we're saying frankly it's very time consuming I mean like one video could take anywhere from at least 5 hours to maybe 10 hours to to create and and also there are mixed uh feelings about the comments right like uh, sometimes you get motivated sometimes you get a bit of a you know like a hate comment so I mean at the end of the day the things that keep you moving is the end outcome so as I'm an educator I'm I'm in in the university so I I have this passion uh, for teaching and so I feel v- very good that whenever in the in the comments right the the people who are viewing the videos that I create if it helps them in in any way I mean I, it's like objective met right go go achieved so I I take satisfaction in knowing that the videos that I make helps to improve or touches the lives of someone and that would not have been possible without the understanding of f- friends and family so of course in order to d- make youtube uh, feasible so so there are times like that I have to uh, tell my friends or family like okay I cannot make it to this uh dinner or or I cannot make it this weekend so there's a lot of times that we have to sacrifice in order to make this to happen and aside from that the thing is i rec- i would recommend in order to pr- proceed with this you have to keep tabs on your own schedule 
and you might need to make sacrifices. For example, you might need to trade your leisure time. You might need to trade uh, Netflix time for making a video. Instead of watching, then you change your role to creating. So, so that is happening for me. Like before, I would spend time, you know, like before going to sleep, uh, watch maybe a, a, an episode or two episodes, right? But now it's different. Like before going to sleep, I would film a video or or even batch produce some videos, like maybe two or three videos, and then maybe edit, you know, like in in the night. So so it could be anywhere until like until like midnight or 1 a.m. Um, but then. Tomorrow my daughter is going to school, so I have to reprioritize that again. So I have to figure out how to uh, improve my efficiency, how to uh, reduce the time that it normally takes to edit. So I have to up my skill in production. Uh, you know, like the technicality of how to use Adobe Premiere more efficiently in order to spend less time on it. So, so the thing is, we have to improve uh, in in every way so that we could save time. And so if we can save just like five minutes a day, then that will amount to so much in a year. Yeah. And, and also I would recommend like, like, for example, when I'm driving to work, I would listen to podcasts, uh, Spotify, I would listen to YouTube. And sometimes I would listen to Gary Vaynerchuk or other motivational uh, YouTube videos in order to get hyped, you know, because I think setting your mindset at the beginning of the day is very important. And so if, if when you're hyped, then it's like whatever challenges life throws at you. I mean, it's a piece of cake. You can handle it. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, you know, there are two things that I really wanted to highlight that both of you guys talked about. So, Chanan, you just recently talk, touched on this topic of, you know, when you're driving or when you're doing something, you're, you're still learning. I think this idea of finding time is very, very important. You know, there are some things that I used to do like I deleted all of the social apps from my phone because you'd scroll Instagram, right? And then you realize you look up and you've done it for 40 minutes, right? And yeah. what, what value does that actually create in my life? Is it something, do I really feel like I've connected with people after I've scrolled memes for, you know, 20 minutes, right? And so, you know, those things add up. I, I was looking at my screen time on my phone and I was spending like two, three hours a day on Instagram or on Twitter or on, you know, Snapchat, whatever it might be. And it's like, well, if I take one hour of that and do something productive with it, or even two hours of that and do something productive with it, you know, that's, that's, that's really good uh, time that I didn't think I had. And there's other things that you do that you don't realize are like huge time wasters. Um, you know, I think uh, managing time, you can find a lot of time in places that you didn't expect. And that's something that has really helped me, especially recently is, you know, I look at my whole day and say, oh my goodness, like over the last couple of years, I've wasted, you know, <laughs> 400 hours on something. And you're like, you know, 400 yeah. hours on Instagram, that's a lot of time. If I spent those 400 hours studying, I'd be a genius or something, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I wouldn't go that far. I probably wouldn't be. <laughs> um, well, you're only a genius. Maybe you would yeah. be like genius square. <laughs> oh, but, you know, that that's that's something that I've realized is that, okay, like, you know, breaks, taking breaks, recharging are important, but scrolling Instagram is not something that makes you, that recharges you. You know, if I go for a walk for 15 minutes, I come back so much more energized than if I scrolled Instagram for 15 minutes. Yeah, so that's Definitely. one thing to focus on. And so Deval, you also talked about uh, using tools to help you. Um, and tools don't have to be, you know, something on your phone. They don't have to be uh, technology. It can be something as simple as like a piece of paper or a whiteboard where you write down all of your deadlines. And, and every day I write down what my schedule is for the whole day. And so I've found that when I actually, you know, go through and say what I'm going to do at each hour, each 15 minute or 30 minute in interval during the day, I, I have to hold myself fairly accountable to that. And I also schedule my break time. I know, you know, every single minute of my day is accounted for. And, you know, that eliminates that kind of creep of when you take a break and then it ends up being 15 or 30 minutes or, or an hour. And so that's one way I've been able to like, you know, control time rather than it kind of control me. And I think that, especially when we're talking about this time management idea, uh, that's what you want to mass. That's what you want to 
like develop is that that power to control your time rather than like you know being being subject to its will in general so i think that that's kind of a maybe a fun and slightly different perspective for some other people going forward Shannon, I, i'd like you know you talked a little bit about accountability i think that that plays right. into the next thing i'd like to talk about and that's motivation you know how do you stay motivated to learn how do you stay motivated to make youtube videos um right. especially with so much going on I mean, you have a family exactly. like me um that, that's not an easy thing a lot of people just burn out because they lose motivation right so accountability i mean th this is very important and and i think I, i've become more accountable for the youtube space uh i think it's, it's ever since uh we collaborated ken so you you reaching out and you forming this uh, community of data scientists uh in in, in the discord and I, I believe that after that we, we kind of talk more about youtube stuff related to uh, data science so so whenever i get stuck or i would ask you guys and you guys would provide feedbacks and so the thing is it, it makes doing youtube data science stuff more fun and it's more it's more like it's a part of a big, bigger community it's not like i'm alone i'm i'm doing youtube alone so it doesn't have that fear factor it doesn't have that you know like kind of like a in solitude you're you're not making youtube in solitude so we have friends to so we know that someone is waiting for the next video right like like for example jamin you uh, mario so we have the sense of you know like someone is waiting for for the video to be made and other subscribers are also suggesting ideas like can you make a video about this could you do about that and so they're looking forward to that so i, I think that will motivate me to uh, create videos and also having accountability like with friends family so i would tell them that okay I, i'm in this youtube thing and the thing is once i told them right so the, whenever they we meet we we would probably talk and then they'll be like how how's your youtube thing going so in order to move forward then one thing is you have to bring the channel uh pretty much more consistently uh so you have to make more progress in you know uploading videos uh building the community uh, building the channel and before i started this youtube i talked to my friend uh, his name is jasper and he recommended the three C that I should uh, look into. So the first C is content. So he said to make good content and people will follow you, listen to you. Uh, consistency, so you have to consistently bring out new videos. And another is community. So, I mean, that that is also very uh, life-changing. So without those advices, I don't think I would be here, uh, along with the amazing community that Ken has built on data scientist yeah so I, I guess these two are uh the accountabilities that help me to move forward in the youtube space awesome how about you Deval? yeah so what so the question is what keeps you motivated uh, and like if you're talking about my youtube initiative it's really uh, i always think like why am i doing it and the answer goes back into the roots of your value system and almost the purpose of your life. Uh, my father was a teacher and we had teaching as our value system in our family. Uh, and because of that, I, I, always, I, I was even uh, teaching uh, his students who came to, for a personal tuition to him. And uh, I always enjoyed that. So, and even today when I do YouTube, when I see a lot of appreciation comments, you know, I, I get this email saying that, okay, I got a job uh, because of the, your tutorials or whatever. It just gives inner satisfaction. So when you think about why of that thing, it actually keeps you motivated. So it, then, then nothing matters actually. So if it aligns with your uh, purpose of your life, then that is something that uh, you will end up doing it. I always tell to my friends that YouTube and teaching is something that I will do till the end of my life. Doesn't matter whether I get money, whether if I don't get anything, I will do it because it just keeps me happy. And when it comes to learning data science, 
let's say if you're a student or working somewhere and you are learning data science and you want to stay motivated because there is a lot of content and there is just a lot of hell lot of things to do so how do you stay motivated so i always say that start building projects because when you build a project at the end of some definite time period you have produced something tangible which you can see which you can play with which you can even show it to your friends and say hey i built this cool project let's say if i keep on reading machine learning books for 6 months without producing any application it's very easy to get demotivated so producing something tangible that you can show and share with people is i think very important when it comes to motivation awesome and you know, i i agree with with both of you guys i think having a community having friends you know both of you guys have helped keep me accountable you know we do this every weekend i i probably wouldn't wouldn't film every uh, you know every weekend if if i didn't have other people that i felt like were depending on me um you know there are two other things that i really think can help with motivation so the value you talked about tying what you're doing to your purpose and i think that that's very important most people don't think broadly about what they're here for and you know what what meaning they attach to learning data science or some of these things and i personally think it's really cool to have maybe like a mission statement for for everything you do so you know the reason why i create videos is i want to make data science more accessible with data science and sports analytics more accessible to everyone i think it's an awesome field i've had great experience with it and i think it can create a lot of value to society like if we have more data scientists like we're going to be solving a lot more problems that are that are relevant to everyone um and you know that every time i see that i'm like okay well like i really want to get out of bed and produce stuff um another thing related to that is having personal goals you know i write my goals as as you guys have seen in some of my videos like all over the place <laughs> and you know every day i read them every day they're looking at me and that's one way of kind of holding yourself accountable right because rather than having other people do it you have a piece of paper on the wall that's like oh, i said i was going to make two videos every week i better do it um but the last thing about motivation is i think there's like a a a misnomer or or a misunderstanding about it is that you know motivation is very fickle you know i can wake up some mornings and be like oh, i don't want to do this stuff right even with all of the the good reinforcing things that i have and what's arguably more important than motivation is having really good habits because habits are automatic You know, if every morning I wake up and it's like every morning I know I start, do my most important thing and I film, then even on days where I have low motivation, I still go through the motions because I've trained myself to do that. So also, you know, creating an environment, creating a like an ecosystem. My camera is right next to my desk. I make it as easy as possible for myself to do these things. Sometimes you don't even need motivation if you've set it up really easily for yourself. So I think that you know finding ways one to like increase motivation like we've talked about is really important but finding ways to succeed even when your motivation is low uh through good habits and through making things as easy as possible is another thing that is generally overlooked and um you know that's a very important part of uh of getting all of that stuff done so you know we've talked about time management we've talked about how to stay motivated uh what are your guys thoughts on actually staying organized so you know what what are your guys' best practice we'll probably start with you Deval um on actually like keeping your stuff together creating a a plan around data science what does that look like for you guys uh we covered some of it in uh, the first question itself but using tools is important either you use uh, zoho sprint board or jira if you have or if you want to go with simple task management system the to do list is an application that you can use so i always keep uh you know i i get so many suggestions from youtube that okay we want to do we want you to teach this and that but i always focus on my next two big things and i don't worry about rest of the things so that those things are order in my to do is the uh, application and uh focusing on one or two things is number 1 then managing your time throughout the day which i mentioned that use your morning uh, hours where your brain is at the highest capacity to learn something new to do something which requires more like cognitive thinking 
and pushing the mundane task to later part of the day that is uh, the, the second thing and then uh, being consistent basically you know sometimes you might get bored that okay what what is this going on like daily i'm just putting videos videos it's the same life but then you see kind of the result uh, after some time because when i started my youtube channel for initial one year uh, there were like uh, i think there were not even like 1000 subscribers and you know you would think that i'm producing like 500 videos and there is not enough traction but the the, the you know the rule is it, it takes so much effort and time initially but uh, after that it's kind of like an exponential curve so you have to keep that exponential curve in my mind it applies to learning as well if you just start learning your programming or data science initially you will be slow but then see the curve is like this and most of the people will give up when they are about to shoot so yep. that that is very important that keeping that curve in mind is uh, very important well, you know i i think it's very interesting how it might be slightly different but how similar our approaches are you know basically on my computer i i use the sticky notes i i'm a windows user um and i have all the things that i like want to do and they're all prioritized right and so I, you know i read this book a while ago and i'll link it below it's called the one thing and it's something that changed my life it's like you focus on you know one unifying theme for an extended period of time and like you'd be shocked at what successes you can have related to that but basically i take from that list of the things that i prioritized and the ones that i prioritized the highest i put it right on that schedule and i schedule it in in the mornings uh, you know i i know that every day between 8 and 10:30 i am my most productive and that's when i want to do the thing that has the largest impact on my day uh, you know there's this concept called the pareto principle and so there's two principles that i that i live my life by so the first is the pareto principle and that's that 20% of the i mean 80% of the results come from 20% of the of the activities that you do So if you focus on those 20%, you know, you get huge diminishing marginal returns by working on anything else. So why would you really even focus on the other things when you're getting the most value of those four things? You know, for me in YouTube it's like producing videos. If I know that like I get a video out every twice a week, like I know that I'm going to have growth, I know I'm going to be able to reach people, I know that that's going to further my goals. Um the other principle that I actually didn't explicitly mention earlier is called the Parkinson's principle. And so the Parkinson's principle is that you know basically the task that you have will expand to fill the time that you give it. So if I give myself 3 hours to work to send an email, that email might take me 3 hours to write. But if I give <laughs> myself 5 minutes to write that email, I'll likely be able to to do it in 5 minutes. And so I mean obviously that's like a maybe a bit of an exaggeration but if you're putting time caps on your things you're going to be a lot more productive because you can actually like usually do the tasks in the amount of time that you give them. So I mean those are two kind of unifying themes of organization that have personally helped me. So Chana what are your thoughts there? Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh I I used the latter one that you mentioned about, the Parkinson's where you, if you spend 5 minutes or I mean if you give it 5 minutes and then it will expand to fit that time. So like like during my day, um so the day so so I plan my day the day before the, the tomorrow. Like like for example, like tomorrow I'll start planning like in the evening of today, like what what am I going to do for the whole week? So typically on Sunday I would plan like okay, what what am I going to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so having a mental map of what the week is going to be like, then when the time comes on a Monday morning or a Monday afternoon, then I know exactly what I need to do. So ha- have you guys ever been in a situation where you're you're suddenly free and then you have to figure out what should I do, right? Yeah. And then yeah. I mean just having that like what what am I going to do? I mean it's like you're you're just trying to find something to fill your time. So so sometimes being busy might not equate to being productive. So if you like like for me if you plan your time like like you know like Sunday or Saturday night and then like what are you going to do for the whole week? Then whenever time 
is available to you, then you know exactly what you want to do. Yeah. So, so, so that will be kind of like, you have a clear schedule, like a mental map of the, the week, and then you, you'll act accordingly. So it's kind of passively, like, like as Ken mentioned, right? Like you don't like you, you already have your camera all set up, right? So it's passive. And so you just do it. Yeah. And, and recently I've been listening to uh, Pat Flynn's uh, YouTube podcast. And he mentioned about this five second rule uh, from Mel Robbins. So you don't have to think about anything too much. Like if you want to do it, five, four, three, two, one, action, just do it. Yeah, so just count down, you know, and, and you just do it. I think that there's like a, a misnomer around that is, you know, that we right. talked about with motivation before is that mm -hmm. a lot of people believe you need motivation to drive action, right? And in truth, it's the other way around. When you start something, you gain motivation as you go if you have little successes. So like, rather than like waking up and being like, okay, I have to get psyched up to start writing code to start learning data science. If you start and you have a little bit of success, you're gonna like get amped about it. You're gonna dive in and get really immersed in it. Uh, one one warning for anyone that's, that's watching this, um, you know, I, as I've kind of really focused on personal development, as I focused on thinking about how I spend my time. I have a little bit of trouble now actually like doing activities that I used to enjoy. So like I used to enjoy watching Netflix series sometimes. Now I can't get into them because I feel like, wow, I have like a lot better things to do with my time that could really, mm -hmm. that I really enjoy or that could be, that could be more fulfilling or whatever that might be. So if, if you, if you're okay with losing a little bit of interest in some of the things that are maybe pure leisure activities, you know, by all means jump in. If that's something you have reservations about, that's that's totally okay as well. I don't know if you guys have had the same experience where, um, you know, some of those types, you know, I, I don't enjoy playing video games anymore. I don't do, enjoy doing some of those things, which I've found very, maybe it's just me getting older too, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I have similar experience, Ken, actually, when I, watch like uh, TV for a long time, I almost start getting this guilt feeling. I'm like, what am I doing? I could be doing like much more impactful right, right. thing. Same applies for socialization. Like see, socialize is, is important, but sometimes you have the social, social event, which it goes on for like eight hours and you're just talking with people on random topics and not doing anything meaningful on such occasion. You know, I try to go a little late or I try to set expectations right that, you know, I will be part of it, but it will be probably two hours rather than eight hours. Mm -hmm. So I just try to kind of save a little bit of time from here and there every year and then just put that in my, in, in the work that I like. Awesome. So I just have a couple more questions. So the first, well, I guess it's like in the middle of the question, whatever it might be. I want to know what your guys' process is for learning something new. So that's something I've been thinking about a lot. You know, we've all been learning data science continually. I mean, we learn new concepts every now and then, but what does that process look like for you? Let's say you wanted to start learning reinforcement learning. How would you go about uh, doing that? Let's start with uh, you this time, Shannon. Yeah, so when learning something new, so I like like from coming from academia, so the thing is like what you would do is you, you do a literature review you you look at what other people has already been doing, and then you look at the gaps of knowledge, and then you try to figure out how you can make it better, how you can make it more efficient, how you can make it faster, or how you could use that approach uh, in other novel applications. So, so that like for me personally, I would then uh, go to this database called Scopus or PubMed. And then I would search for the keywords that I would like to learn about. Let's say reinforcement learning. And then I would read a couple of review articles or read a couple of book chapters. So I'm not going to read the entire book. I'm just going to, you know, like cherry pick some sections until I uh, understand a little bit about what it is. And then that will help me to refine the keyword search. And then I'll dig deeper. Uh, and then like, for example, I have maybe like reinforcement learning. And then let's say I spent an hour and then I get more understanding I'll, and then I'll be like reinforcement learning uh, and then maybe like methodological improvements. And then you kind of hone, uh, hone in into the uh, specificity of the topic that you want. Uh, so you 
pretty more more or less like you're drilling down into the specific topic more and so and at the same time i would also take a note of that so i would create like a mind map so i would keep the core uh core part of like a, like a tree right at the middle of the paper and then i'll branch out so each branch will be like other subtopics and then i probably include some example into the one of the sub sub branches of the mind mind map and then i'll, I'll, I'll link topics together link subtopics with another subtopic and sometimes maybe you might get a and b and you could create something uh, more right maybe one plus one could be 10 and so um looking at the whole field holistically at the burst eye view level and then you you're trying to find the gaps in knowledge and then you try to make something novel out of that and another way is not not really another way but a, a second way of aside just from taking notes is to to teach so let's say that that'll also help in accountability as well so when you're learning something new uh, i once attended this lecture uh one of the Nobel laureates uh, I, i can't remember his name he, he said that the best way to learn something is to teach about it and so i, I mean after that day I, i've been exploring ways on learning new stuff by teaching and also by writing a book as well so sometimes when, when I, I have zero knowledge about the topic, I'll write a book about it. I'll write a, a, a book chapter about it. I'll write a review article about it. So in, in writing about it or even blogging about it in, in like towards data science on Medium or just like writing an article. The thing is, in order to write the article, you have to do a lot of research, a lot of review of the literature, and then you have to synthesize that into your own words. And so in doing so, that process will help you to become more knowledgeable in the field. And then you send it out to other, uh, to the publisher, and then the publisher will send it out to experts in the field, and then they give you feedbacks on points that you have missed. And then you revise the manuscript accordingly, and then you will learn. And then uh, hopefully, then you'll become an expert as well. Very cool. What are your thoughts, Saval? So... One thing I would mention is similar to what Chenin mentioned is uh, that is a, if you go to YouTube and if you search how to learn something effectively, uh, there is this person called Nisan Kasibatla. He is a Guinness Book of World Champion in a memorization. I think he can memorize probably hundred digit number. He, he, he has crazy mental abilities. And what he suggested for learning something effectively was the same thing, which is spending less time in input and more time in output. So input is, let's say you are watching deep learning video. So you maybe watch the video for two hours, but spend more time in output, which has three components. The first component is um, reflecting on what you learn. It's not like I watch one video on reinforcement one list, uh, watch second, third. I, by, by, I might spend five hours watching 10 videos on reinforcement learning, but I did not spend time on reflecting. So what I do is like watch watch one video or read some chapter, then reflect, implement. I always try to write code around it. And the third component is sharing, which is what you mentioned, Ken Chen, in um, either making a YouTube video or even brainstorming with other people who are knowledgeable. So spend less time in input, more time in output. Another thing is before I start learning a new topic, I always try, try to find a good resource. So let's say, I just learned, for example, machine learning. Now I want to switch to deep learning. If I just Google deep learning resources, you'll be lost. There will be like mm -hmm. thousands of courses on all kinds of websites, thousands of videos. How do you pick the best one? So I talk, then talk to people, like like we are having this community. So I'll generally ask Ken or Krish or Hugh Chen in that, okay, what do you guys think? What, what is the best course for deep learning? And from my friends, I get these resources and then I try to pursue that. And when I start following that course, uh, again, I don't want to just keep on consuming the content. I always like writing codes. If I'm learning deep learning, after watching one hour of video, if I'm not writing code, I will, I, I will realize I'm probably going in the wrong direction. So these are some of the things that we can do uh, for effective learning. 
Awesome. You know, I, I agree with both of you guys. I, I actually, I read a book and I also made a video on it called Ultra Learning. And this this book, so the, the, the concept is the guy basically went through all of the MIT computer science coursework in a single year that usually takes people four years. And he was able to do it by following basically these principles that he's put together. Um, I'll, I'll link all of that stuff below if you want more in depth about that. But to me, when I go about learning something new, I try to get a quick high level understanding of what it is. I usually do that through uh, either YouTube videos or some light reading medium articles are great for that. I kind of plot or like chart all the things to know about that area. And then I try and get started doing a project or coding it or getting it just to run as quickly as possible. So I don't know if I've stolen this from someone. I don't think I have. I think this is something that, that I've created, uh, but it's called the minimum viable knowledge. And the idea is that you get just enough knowledge to be able to start applying the concept. And then once you start applying it, you can start to understand how it functions. So I look at this whenever I learn a new machine learning algorithm, I basically will write some code that applies it using scikit-learn, whatever package it is. And then I'll go back through and try and understand the math behind it. Um, you know, if you want to take this even a step further, you can basically code that algorithm from scratch. Um, I don't really want to ever do that again because it's very tedious, but I did have to do that in grad school for pretty much all of the machine learning algorithms that I use daily, like including neural nets or current neural nets, all these things. So that, um, being able to go jump forward and use it and then backtrack and figure out how it works is something that I believe has personally worked really well for me because I need, you know, when you get, when you get examples, right, that's when you actually, things start to click for most people. And most people are thinking, you know, without examples, like, oh, let's think about this theoretically. Um, and that concreteness is something that really brings it all together. So um, again, like that ultra learning book is really good. It helped me kind of frame how this would work in my mind. But uh, the idea of also that, that you guys both mentioned of accountability is important here as well, or teaching. I mean, that's one of the reasons I make YouTube videos. Selfishly, uh, it helps me to actually understand these concepts better because hopefully I don't put anything or too many things out there that I don't understand that well. I really feel like I have to research the things that, that I'm talking about, you know, so I don't look like an idiot online, which still can happen sometimes, but, <laughs> um, but yeah. And what happens is like, once you uh, put that video, some people might ask some really intelligent question. This has happened with me where even I wouldn't even know the answer, then that will, uh, encourage me to do critical thinking on such topics and you know i do my research and then i reply to those comments but in that process now i have consolidated my own understanding about that topic yeah that that happens all the time and even if i'm wrong on youtube you know people will let me know and you can guarantee that i won't be wrong about that same thing again because of the embarrassment or whatever that might be so you know to anyone watching i if i do something wrong let me know um you know, I, I don't mind being embarrassed. I don't, I don't, if, if it helps me grow, it's totally worth it. Yeah, same here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I think the last question I wanna ask is if you, you know, I, I've learned a lot about myself, a lot about um, these experiences through, through different books. That's the best way that I, I've, you know, learned how to actually understand productivity, motivation, all these things. Do you guys have any books, uh, people to follow on YouTube, uh, any resources that can help other people better understand, again, these concepts of productivity, organization, and motivation that could help them in data science? Uh, we'll start. Uh, with I would start. Yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't have any suggestion on the productivity books, but then, in general, for motivation, I, I would suggest the Magic of Thinking Big. That book is probably the best for communication and relationship management, uh, how to win friends and influence people. So the other two books I would suggest that people should read. Awesome, I'll, def I'll link all these books below as well for, for anyone interested. How about yourself, Jenna? Yeah, so I, so let me show. There we go, I love it. Ah big pile of books <laughs> all 
right? So, so I have two books. Like, this is a good book. So this provides you with a high level uh, on the importance of data analytics. And another good book is this one, but Ken has made a video about it. So yeah, check out Ken's video. And I believe ultra learning is, is very awesome. And the author Scott Young shares as Ken has made a video about that, how you could leverage that in order to ultra learn a new topic. Yeah, so I believe that the ability to learn things, learn new concept will keep you hungry to grow and mature. And so by learning new things, you, you'll find a better way to improve yourself, to save time, and also at the end to eventually that all of these would le lead to self-fulfillment. So, I mean, every day I'm learning something new. And so being in academia is no different. I mean, I always feel like an imposter. I have, I have this like, you know, like, this, whenever I go to a conference, right? People are sharing their latest finding, the novel algorithms. So I, I normally I would feel like I don't know anything. And so like even starting a YouTube channel at the, before hitting the record button, it, it was a major challenge. And so ha having this sense of like, I mean, there's so much that you don't know. And, and the thing is, why would you want to share and maybe someone would say, okay, you don't know that, right? So, so the thing is, just do it, right? So, and, and the thing is that afterward, it becomes better, right? You, you, you get to understand about yourself more and you'll later eventually realize that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything. I mean, we're just human beings and we just learn from one another, right? And so by doing that, you, you'll grow, you'll mature, and and at the same time you'll you'll help other people learn as well so i mean if if you make contents and let's say 99 people say you're doing something good and let's say maybe one person might say okay you're doing this wrong right like some of my comments and then the thing is i want to know what did i do wrong so that i could improve and make better content in the future so i i take every comment objectively like good and bad so i try to improve and I'm not saying I know everything, so it's it's more or less like a refining uh, way, like revising for an, an exam, and you get feedback, right? So that's always great. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think that people have the most success in data science or any of these mm -hmm. fields if they look at everything from the through the eyes of a student. You mm -hmm. know, no one knows everything. Everyone right. who's successful is still learning, and they're constantly learning. And you have to love learning to be a data scientist, or you have to like learn to love learning to become a right. data scientist. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I love these books. That's kind of like my side passion aside from data science and sports analytics. I like reading about like personal optimization and, and these types mm -hmm. of things. So I've, I've, I think four books that I recommend to everyone that I think could help them help improve all of these areas. So the first, it's kind of two books. One is called Atomic Habits and one is called Tiny Habits. You can choose either one of them. They say basically the same thing. I mean, the idea is that you, you create small habits, like the very smallest habit, and they help to encourage you to do these things every day. So if I wanna become a data scientist, what's one of the most important things that I have to do? I have to learn how to code. If I write one line of code every day, that's like a great step forward. You begin to create that habit of coding every day. And just one line of code, you don't have to feel bad about doing it. And it's something that you physically can do every day. If you're in bed, about to go to bed, and you're like, oh crap, I forgot to write it. You can still get up and write like, print hello world, right? Like you can still do it no matter what. And once you actually start, once you write a line of code, I almost always write another one and another one and another one. and so just getting started, you break through that barrier with these small habits. Um, the next book that has really changed how I view um, motivation and how I um, keep myself going is called The Four Disciplines of Execution. I think I've mentioned it before, but uh, in this book, basically, the idea is you want to set an important goal. That's the first discipline. The second one is you want to track metrics that you have control over. Let's say I wanted to lose weight. What I would track is 
not my actual weight. That's something that would fluctuate based on a lot of other things. What I have control over is I can track the things I eat. I can track how many pounds I exercise. And you're tracking these things that lead what you actually want to achieve, which is the weight loss. The third principle there is to like keep a scoreboard. So I every day track all these things and, and see how my progress is going. And the, next, the last thing is like the accountability aspect. And so those four things together are what I believe creates like incredible output, whether it's YouTube, whether it's learning data science, um, because you know exactly where you are at every given point in time, and you can see your progress over time. Uh, the last book, which personally I think has changed my life the most, especially related to YouTube, is called The One Thing. And you know, the concept is, is very simple, is you wanna focus on the most important thing in your life um, and dedicate most of your time to it. So at the beginning of this year, I said, okay, I want to make YouTube my one thing for the year, or it was really producing content, right? So that's YouTube, Medium, um, whatever that might be. And I woke up every morning, the first thing I would work on was YouTube or, or, or the producing content. And, you know, I was able to reach one of my milestone for the whole year, which I thought was absolutely almost impossible to reach in six months. And like, that's a testament to, hey, like focusing on this one thing, it does pay off. It doesn't pay off in the first week. It doesn't pay off in the first month, but it does pay off a lot sooner than you'd actually maybe expect it to. So if you're looking to learn data science, like start focusing, like make a data science the first thing you do when you wake up, make it the focal point of, uh, of a lot of parts of your life. Um, you know, I think that I might have mentioned this before, but um, life balance, right? I think that that's actually uh, a falsehood. So I think in the short term, your life is very rarely balanced, right? You know, I, I probably work a lot more hours than most people, but I feel energized. You know, I'm young, I feel great when I'm, when I'm working and I still get enough social life and, and, and exercise and things like that. But you want your life to be balanced over long chunks of time, not on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. So some days, you know, I'll work, you know, 14 hours because I feel great that day or whatever it might be. Um, but that same day, I can't do all of the leisure and the balance activities. Maybe I need to push that the weekend or push that into to other chunks of my life. And so, you know, the idea that, um, you know, we, we need to have all this perfect balance all the time. I think balance, again, is extremely important. You know, my hair would all be falling out if I didn't have it, but we can compartmentalize it over different chunks and that's what might make us successful. You know, I don't think anyone who's truly successful would spend all of their time every day focusing on exercise, health, spirituality, and work evenly every day, right? That just wouldn't work. Um, and so that's kind of what my closing thought would be is maybe think about these things a little bit differently. Maybe you have to sacrifice a little bit more in the short term to be very successful in the long term. Do you guys have any other uh, closing thoughts? We'll start with Deval here that, that you'd want to leave the uh, the group with. Uh, no, I would just say the similar thing that you mentioned, just uh, be extremely positive minded. And I think we have talked about one thing, which is to surround yourself with a lot of positive people. So that's very important. It goes by saying you are an average of five people that you spend most of your time with. So that would be my yeah closing comment. What about you, Shannon? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I guess like remarks for learning data science in this journey is to to be accountable, to own your education, own your journey. So if you take full responsibility for this journey, then you have full power to direct the course of your journey. And another is to I would say um, just do it. Don't overthink. So if you find that learning data science is important to you, don't overthink it and just do it and try to figure out like the purpose of why you're doing it right like as Deval has mentioned uh, teaching his passion for teaching and so like for me like i'm using data science every day 
So I'm, how am I using data science? I'm using it to solve problems. And, and the thing is not only solve problems, but I use it as an alternative to buying software to solve problems. So I, I save a lot of money there too. And, and also by doing data science and applying it to my work, I effectively increase productivity for the uh, research project that I'm doing. So like, for example, I could now automate stuff that normally I would need to do manually. Like if I would have to collect data manually from websites, now I could do it automatically as Ken has uh, demonstrated in some of his project using Selenium to scrape data from the web and pre-process all of that. So all of these could replace, you know, like manual work. And so by applying all of these to what I'm doing and I mean, it's like superpower. And if for those of you who are waiting to start, don't think about it, just start, right? Don't, don't say, what should I learn? R versus Python, right? Select one and just make something happen with that. And once you have know how to use it, then in the future, then you could go back and like, okay, let's say you start with Python, you could go back and okay, try R. Or if you try R, you could go back and try Python, right? So it, the question is not R versus Python, but just select one and move on, right? Get over that question and make something happen with that. And then you'll, you'll be help. You'll be thankful that you create something useful. And once you're motivated, then I think everything becomes history. Then you, you then you, w once you get the momentum running, then, I mean, you're just gonna build on top of that, like a snowball effect. Yeah. So nothing's going to stop you. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's awesome. I think that kind of hits one of the nails on the head is that when you learn one thing, you don't, it complements all the other knowledge that you have. If you understand R, then learning another, you know, Python is going to be easier because you have something to base that knowledge off of, you know, you have a frame of reference. So I think people get very wrapped up in, in choices when all these choices are pointed in the same direction and you know, we lose sight of that. It's okay. I mean, this is not a short process. Learning data science, in my personal opinion, at minimum, minimum to get like a job, for example, to take six months to a year, very minimum and most times longer than that. So um, thank you guys again so much. I, I always enjoy these talks and I learned quite a bit in this one. Um, I, I'm always fascinated with how other people kind of organize their lives, design their workflow. And this has been very eye-opening to me and hopefully eye-opening for, for anyone watching.